Hi, welcome to Creatively Speaking. I'm Nicole Marchluck. Today we are here with painter Bill Cummins, and we're going to talk to him a little bit about what inspires him and why he decided on painting. Hello. Hi, Bill. Hi there. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing today? Good. Good. So, paint. How did you decide on painting? Um, I've actually been drawing and painting and doodling since I was a little kid, and I absolutely love it. It's one of my most favorite uh, hobbies, passions, things to do. It's very enjoyable, very relaxing, and very expressive. And so you've been painting since you were a kid. Mm-hmm. And um, did you actually go to school for painting, or did you just, it's all naturally taught and I learned? I took a couple of courses, and after having taken a few courses, I mean, the tuition and the supplies, they, they're about the same cost, and it's just, it's too expensive. So I took whatever little talent I had and just decided to expand on it, read a lot of books, studied a lot of different art forms and various you know, methods of, of paint, draw, drafting, design, uh, sculpting. Took quite a few courses and it, it helps expand your mind into what other things are out there and things you can do. Really cool. Um, what inspires you when you when you look out in the world, what types of paintings are what? It, it, do you just do everything, or do you like to specialize in uh, landscapes? Or um, I like I love landscapes. I love nature. I love outdoors. Um, I like to be outside, so it's it's very easy to find inspiration that way. Um, one of the things I do when I find my inspiration, if you will, is I will just go out wherever I'm at and look at stuff, snap a few pictures. Um, I was out doing a. Uh, thing with some teenagers at a summer camp for a week right in the middle of a ceremony one of the girls had stopped like everything the ceremony and all and she just goes can you paint that and it was just the night sky it was a, it was a beautiful night out so I snapped a picture of it went home in a couple days and I ended up painting it wow. um, so I was out uh, my wife and I went out to the Plainfield cruise night on Tuesday this last week seen a few really nice cars, snapped a couple pictures, and now I'm doing this piece here of a hot rod that was, you know, just out there on the street for viewing. So I really find my inspiration wherever the mood strikes. Um, you know, I love architecture. I love designs. I love, there's, there's art in so many places. So you go out, and for me, I'm a big fan of downtown Chicago. Oh, yeah. Not just because of it's Chicago and there's like, oh, my favorite teams are there and all that sort of stuff. But I like to walk up and down the streets, and I, I look like a tourist because I literally walk up doing one of these around the streets because I'm looking at the buildings. And on some the of these buildings, yeah. on the architecture, there's so much art and design that goes into the, to the, the format of the building itself. You know, all the, uh, the trim work, all the, all the sculpting on the edges of the top of a building. Oh, yeah. People don't look at it, and it's, it's something that's not to be missed. If you have that opportunity... I always recommend to go down there and just look, look around, oh, yeah. and see some of the stuff that people don't really. Have pay you taken to. one of those architecture tours? No, I've not. I've, okay. I've seen them. Um, they are cool, but uh, I guess because I like walking around myself and looking at stuff. Oh yeah. You know, I'll, you can go at your own pace and everything. And yeah, yeah, I'll jump in a cab and, and we'll uh, we'll ride around and look at stuff, or we'll uh, we'll just sit somewhere and look out the windows and check a place out. Um, the Chicago Public Library is a real big place that has a lot of design and architecture to the outside and inside of the oh, building. Oh yeah. You know that's that's definitely to be uh, to be seen. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a great city for for inspiration, I believe. So, do you sell your paintings? Do you I make do, a living? I do. So, and so I mean, I have shows lined up all over the place. I run my own shows, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I am all over the place. You can always find out where I'll be if you go to my website on Facebook. Uh, you can go to facebook.com forward slash sketching hands. Okay. That's the actual name of my art company, and you can see all the various. Uh, mediums that I work in, everything from ink and lead uh, to oil and acrylic uh, for painting. So I do I do a vast array of. of oh, okay, all types. so so it's not just one style of paint. You you I, or one medium. You right. do quite a few different. Um, Correct. So okay. what you're actually looking at behind us, uh, the two paintings that are behind us are actually oil paintings. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a big Bob Ross fan. So okay. this one actually was an inspiration that I took out of a, a book that he, he had done. Uh, it's, it's similar, it's not, it's not identical, I'll tell you that. It's, oh, it's yeah. definitely not. Yeah. Because I put my own little flair to it. I love, like I said, I love nature. And the one over here 
to the other side of me is a lighthouse that I just dug up some pictures of lighthouses, found that one, and thought, oh, let's see what I can do, and added my own little flavor to it and, and had a little fun with it. Um, and so those two are oils up here, the one sitting right in front of you, I call it the painted quilt. That one's actually acrylic. So okay. the biggest difference you can tell with painting is the texture. Okay. Acrylic comes out generally very smooth. You can manipulate it, paint a little thicker and make it thicker and rougher, but it doesn't look as attractive. So I made that one very smooth. That's an acrylic. These have a lot of texture. If you touch them and feel them, you'll feel the brush strokes. You'll feel where the brush lifted up and touched the, touched the painting, and you'll be able to tell the difference between the two. Um, and then, of course, uh, if you go to my website, I also have various sketchings of ink and, and uh, charcoal and uh, lead, different drawings that I've done as there as well. Is there a particular medium you prefer, or it just depends on what what you want to feel from that painting, if you want to ha show the texture, is that how you decide Pretty which much. one you're going to do the picture in? I've, I've done uh, things, for example, this one here that I'm working on now. I actually took it, sketched it out with a pencil, and then decided that I was going to do an oil painting to give a little bit of uh, feel with the, uh, the texture. It really just depends on, on what I feel like would look best. There are things that I've done in oil, and I'm like, ah, let me try it, and you know, I'll, I'll redo it in something else. And there are things that I've done in in acrylic that I just didn't like. Slap a coat of white acrylic over it, and then redo okay. another painting in oil just to see what it looked like. So, so I do change it up based on what it looks like and, and what I what I feel at the moment, mm -hmm. you know. So it, it can come and go. Okay. So besides painting, what other hobbies or Really, artwork Things is Things do you like to do? <laughs> that's okay. Artwork is probably one of my biggest uh, hobbies. I'm a big sports guy. I love sports. It's one of my favorites. So if I'm not painting, I'm usually a nerd, and I'm doing some sort of uh, memorabilia, collectible type stuff. Okay. Buying, selling, trading, whatever the case may be. Mostly selling lately just to uh, build up the, the art business. But, yeah, if I'm, not, if I'm not doing something with sports, then I'm doing something with art. So it's, it's always one of the two. That's what I'm always into. And so do you teach kids or do you just work with kids in other areas? And then it, you mentioned kids, so I didn't know. Right, no. Um, most of the stuff I've been doing with teens is youth ministry work with, uh, right now, the Chicago Diocese, St. Julie's and Tinley uh, uh, Park, sorry. Um, and I've been working with them with that. As far as kids and painting, I've been approached uh, by a few different parents if I'm willing to do a class. I don't have my own studio right now, still working out of the house, so um, you know, I've offered to do in-house sessions. What, I've, what I'm starting to come up with is uh, paint parties. Okay. Um, you know, I would bring 10 canvases or 20 canvases, the brushes, and you know, a whole bunch of paint, and then you and your friends would, you would invite a bunch of your friends, bring them out, and we would do a paint night where I would kind of do brush stroke by brush stroke, show you how to paint it. And you would paint it, and they offer the same thing at a lot of restaurants now. Yeah, it's become very um, popular. It is, but it's also very pricey to do it in a restaurant oh, because yeah. now you're paying for, and you know, there's nothing against it. It's right. a great idea. Oh, it's yeah. a wonderful night out. But if you can manage to do that inside your house where maybe you have a potluck and you have your friends bring a dish and, you know, everybody brings a cooler of their own favorite drink versus going out and spending $7 per drink and oh, yeah. $5 for, you know, whatever. So it becomes more affordable, more fun, and, and much more enjoyable. So I am starting to open that up, too. That's something we're going to do really soon um, in the next probably month or two. And you're going to offer kids kids parties and adult parties? Or kids which? or adult parties, okay. either one, you know, or mixed. I mean, if parents want to bring their kids out, if they want to have an adult night out only, you know, it really it will be based on whatever the client wants to do in their house. You know, if they want 30 kids with paintbrushes running around the basement, <laughs> God bless them. Yeah. If they want just adults in the house, you know, that's that's their call. It's their house. It's their environment. I'm there just to facilitate, facilitate okay. one aspect of the evening. Wow. And how much would you um, want to charge per person for a type of party like that? Uh, well, something like that would generally be about 35 to 40 per person. And that's going to include all your paint, all your canvas, um, all your supplies for the evening. And keep in mind, you're going to get to keep that painting afterwards as well. Oh, yeah, it's, it makes a great you know, souvenir. Right, and, oh, absolutely. Yeah. It'll be something fun to take home, show your friends, whatever the case may be. And you always hear people say, I can't paint, I can't draw. Realistically, you can. You just choose to find it more challenging. I mean, 
Yeah, there is an aspect that people say you have to have talent. Well, as you see with the wonderful person who is filming me right now, my painting is not exactly, you know, a masterpiece. It's just something fun that I'm doing, and I'm enjoying it, and it's, it's you know, it's, it's worth my time. I enjoy making it. So you'll find out that it's a lot easier than people make it out to be. Yeah, I actually tried one, and my painting, although it did not look like the instructor's, it, it actually came out okay. I was I was very impressed. I've never... Mm -hmm. I people. think I picked up a paintbrush once when I was little, probably in grade school art class, but it actually came out okay. And, and um, so will you have like a, a number of pictures that somebody could choose from and, and say, or would you just say... Um, uh, more or less, it's, it's what do you feel like? Do you feel okay. like doing a cityscape or a... A nature scene, and then if they decide on one or the other, you know, if they say nature scene, you want to do a waterfall, you want to do uh, a bridge, you want to do a lighthouse, then we'll pick it from there. You know, it's it's really something that's kind of easier than you think. You know, it's just a matter of what the client wants at that time. Maybe they got someone they're doing a birthday party, and that person really loves a sports team. Well, we can all paint that logo. You know, we can all do a, a big image of that. Maybe someone really loves whatever. You know, we could just. Change it up based on what they want to do. You know, I'm very, very flexible that way. I like that. That's and and it's and I think it would be inspirational to kids who are so addicted to video games nowadays to see. Let's try art for once and Absolutely. see and just open up their minds and their mm -hmm. and their perspectives on things. And then things, the whole world is not about a video game. You're absolutely correct. Yes, I totally agree. Yeah, and. Uh, and I have no art ability at all, and that's um, one of the reasons I wanted to do this show is to get out and talk with artists. And, and I'm always amazed at um, at being able to create something like this out of thin air. And um, it just so do you always have a picture that you work from, or like with your quilt? Was that just? Free that was hand. something I totally just made up. Made it sounded it, okay. like fun, and I, I went with it, you know. Um, I don't always look at a picture. Sometimes I just make stuff up. Sometimes I just, out of thin air, put something on, on paper or canvas. It's really what kind of moves me at the time. Sometimes, you know, and, and things like, uh, like, like the, city, the skyline of Chicago, it's been done so many times. There's not a whole lot I can do to really change it up, so mm -hmm. to speak. But I can put my own my own likeness to it. Um, if you go to my website, one of the things I have is a picture of the Sears Tower. And rather than just painting the Sears Tower itself, I went and did the research of 150 years worth of Chicago Tribune headlines. And I took all those headlines and I hand painted those headlines in the image itself to create the Sears wow. Tower. Um, I have a whole line of those, everything from sports logos to cartoon characters to the Chicago flag. Um, that's actually one of my most popular pieces right now that people are, are coming out to see at my shows. Wow. Um, that's really cool. I love when, when, uh, when art is um, little images that are made to, to be big images. I know um, even on the Internet you can take, like, submit a bunch of pictures and they'll right. turn in, make those little pictures into one big picture, large image. Um, but to make it from words, that's just really takes a lot. Uh, I think that painting took me about twenty-eight hours, roughly, ballpark. Okay. And how? What? So for something like this, how long would that take you to paint? That one was about a six-week project, and it was because I literally painted the patches one at a time, and I didn't know really what I wanted on each patch. I just kind of made it up, and I, I, you know, I got something really detailed. I started with a simple tree and a, and a, and, a, and some clouds. Then I did a rose bush. And a yin-yang symbol just sounded like fun. The next level, I just did some flowers, and then I did the other side, which was arrows in the middle. You know, I think it was close to St. Patrick's Day, and I did the, the orange background with the, with the, with the shamrock right in the right, middle. Yeah. You know, I, I kind of go with whatever moves me, and uh, that one took me a long time to do, so I just kind of played with it until I really liked it, and then, you know, it looked like a quilt. I literally hand-painted stitching so it looked like oh, a yeah. big blanket, so I called it a painted quilt. Yeah, I know, and it's great. Something so a now, some, like, a la like a landscape like this, how long would that? Took ballpark about eight hours. Okay. Oils, it's funny, uh, acrylics are, are, I'm a very impatient person. So acrylic is my preferred medium because it's so, it dries, I mean, that dries within minutes okay. of painting it. So it's, it's, I make a mistake or I don't like it, 
I can slap paint over it and be done. Oils are not so forgiving. Oh, yeah. They are eight, well, eight hours to make the painting, but then you're looking at two to three months to dry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, it, it could go quicker depending on the environment. You know, and where I'm at, it, it generally takes about a month to a month and a half to dry. And so you have to start over and they can take a lot longer to adjust. You can use paint thinner to kind of manipulate paint, but it's, it's still going to be a process to uh, fix your mistakes. Yeah. And now will you always be just working on one project or do you have multiple projects going on at the same time or? <laughs> uh, Boy, I'm guilty of that. I try to just do one project at a time and what happens is, um, I, I don't know what you want to call it, short attention span, whatever you may, may call it. The MTV uh, generation. What, yeah, it kicks in <laughs> and I'll start something and then it sits on the table and I go to the next thing and it sits on the table and I'll have three or four projects and I'm like, okay, I gotta finish something. You know, I have yeah. to have something to show what I've been doing for the last four weeks. And uh, it, it takes time, but yeah, sometimes I'll have multiple projects. I hate when it happens, but it does happen. Well, wasn't there a famous artist who um, would, depending on the light, he would start was it Van Gogh? Uh. Well, Van, I mean, Van Gogh, all of them, you know, one of the biggest kickers, because uh, I tried that myself, in fact, that was the painting that I did outside. Okay. And I didn't actually pick something that was outside, I just decided to sit outside and paint. Yeah. But paintings outside are really, really hard to do. And the reason they're so hard to do is because an artist will set up at 8 o'clock in the morning and see the landscape and go, this is great, and he'll start painting. And by noon, the sun has moved so much, the shadows have changed, Maybe whatever was there, the wind blew and, and the leaves, you know, leaves fell, branches moved, whatever the case may be. It's a completely different image yeah. within four hour window. And by the time they get done at seven o'clock at night, they've got a nightscape with no shadows and it, it looks totally different. different so, yeah. so depending on the artist, you know, a lot of them don't do the outside stuff because it's because so, so hard yeah. to do. And or me, you could I take a, a picture and then copy the picture if you want, if you Correct. want a specific light time or time of day and specific length of shadow and everything. Right. So you could, if you wanted to, take a picture and then just copy your picture. So if, if a little kid wanted to, or an adult or anybody wanted to get into painting, what would be your advice on getting started? Get very cheap supplies. Get used supplies. Go to Goodwill. Um, don't buy anything expensive right from the start because you're going to get discouraged, you're going to get frustrated, and you're going to get mad at yourself, and you're going to quit. Um, <laughs> Don't quit is my, my, the advice I always give. Don't quit because you never know what's going to come of it. Sometimes you've got to walk away from a drawing seven or eight times. Sometimes you'll do it and you hate it. You walk away from it. You come back and you're like, eh, that's not so bad. Give yourself the opportunity to fail. Let yourself fall on your face a few times. Let yourself look at something, hate it, love it, throw it away, start over. You're going to do it. It's natural. It's human. You're going to hate it. So my biggest advice is start cheap. Go Even if you go to Hobby Lobby, get yourself the big bag of, of cheap $3 variety brushes and sit and play with brush strokes and see what you like and what you don't like and which ones are your favorites and which ones you're like, this is not working for me. Once you kind of get that down, then pick your paint. I mean, I recommend starting with acrylic. Because they're so forgiving, you can, you can be horrible and you can still have something fun. Um, I'm sure I've I've repainted over sections of that thing at least seven or eight times with a patch of white and started over. It's very forgiving. You can do that with acrylic. And then, you know, build on it from there. Go go with what your gut says. If you like it, keep building it. If you don't, throw it away. Start over. You know, there's no rule that says you have to keep everything you make. And painting is something you can do at any age. You can... You can start at any age. I mean, I granted, I've been, I've been drawing and doodling and painting since I was like five years old. So for me... I won't say it comes natural, I'll just say it's, it's something I'd like to do and it's something I'm used to, used to playing around with. Um, over time, you will develop talent, you will develop skill, you will develop brush strokes. You'll, you'll like some stuff and you'll know what you like and you'll know what you hate. I shouldn't say hate, but really right. much dislike. Yeah. I know you've mentioned Bob Ross. Are, would, you, would you encourage people to take a class or to... Or to buy a video and learn from a video or just do it just go out and just try it on your own trial and error I encourage people to try whatever feels comfortable um, taking a class can be expensive so if you want to take a class go for it take a class 
I might recommend, like I said, go get the cheap stuff, play around a little bit, see if you like it, and then if you do, then take the class, invest more in yourself. If you don't, well then, you know, you're not out of the whole lot. You know, if you take the class, you're spending the money on the course, you're spending the money on the supplies, the tuition, you know, there's a lot more cost involved. Mm -hmm. You take, uh, you, you go home or you go to Hobby Lobby, you pick up a few things and you play around, you, you're like, this is not for me. You're out maybe 20 bucks at the most. Yeah. You know, you don't lose a whole lot that way. So, I mean, do what's comfortable for you. That's the best piece of advice I could ever give anybody. Now, are there classes? I know, like, community colleges have classes and... Um other art, like specific art schools have classes. Do places like the library offer or the park district offer? Do you know of anything um, like that? Well, I know Romeoville Rec Center. I don't know if Bolingbrook offers it. I know the Romeoville Rec Center has been in contact with me. Uh, Jason out of there is talking to me about doing a painting class. So that'll be something that's coming up probably in the fall uh, sessions, maybe winter. And I don't know, I know a lot of other, I know a lot of townships have some form of painting. Um, Berwyn has one as well that I know of. Oh, wow. Um, they've actually reached out to me about doing some stuff for uh, a paint class with their kids there. So there's, there are community centers, you know, check with your local community center. It, they're usually cheaper that way. Um, and you can get started that way as well. Now, as we wrap, wrap up today, um, is there anything else that you want to tell people about getting started or we will have your website information on, on at the end of the program and or anything else you just want to say? Um, well, thank you very much for having me. I really enjoyed doing this and I would definitely encourage anybody who is thinking about drawing or painting to try it. Give it a whirl. You know, you got nothing to lose but a few sheets of paper. Um, and if you ever have any questions, I'm not an expert, but I'm always open to talking with people if they want to know more or try something different or even if they want to sit down and, and, and do some techniques, you know, practice brush check, uh, technique. As the camera behind me is showing, this is actually messier than I wanted it to be, so obviously I'm not a professional, and that's okay because I'm still having fun. And that's, that's the main thing. It's, it's about having fun. I, at least that's my opinion. Um, Bill, I want to thank you so much for being my first guest and letting us explore the world of paint. And if you are a regular BCT watcher, Bill will be having his own show coming up in a couple months, so keep an eye out for that. And that's about it. Wrapping up Creatively Speaking, my name's Nicole, and thank you again to Bill. Thank you.